Alrighty, so I'm just speculating here, but uh, I kind of have some suspicions that the cabin air filter has never been replaced on this particular Tahoe. Uh, the vehicle has uh, roughly 150K on it, and I, uh, I caught like a, um, like a weird smell the other day coming out. There must have been like just the perfect atmospheric conditions uh, to overcome my lack of smell. Uh, I suffer from no smell syndrome uh, post COVID or whatever. And uh, I never really smelled it before. Now I've been driving this vehicle around for like six, seven months now or whatever. And uh, I never really smelled the stink. But the other day, either my nose was healing or there's some kind of correct atmospheric conditions but i smelled some stank coming out of these vents right here so uh based on uh, kind of uh, what the title of this video says i do believe that this uh this cabin air filter smelled original so uh, at 163,495 miles in the odometer not not 150k uh, we're gonna pull this glove box apart real quick today and we're gonna peel out this filter and we're gonna see what a stanky old cabin air filter smells like now keep in mind uh, not every car has a cabin air filter and not a lot of people know that their car in fact does have a cabin air filter so we're gonna find out what it looks like to pull out and replace a neglected and or uh, forgotten about or not known about air filtration element. So stay tuned. This is gonna be a short one, but it's also gonna be a very good video. By the way, since I've piqued your interest on the air that you're breathing inside of your vehicle, if you are unaware or unsure whether or not your car has a cabin air filter, then the best way to find out is to try to find the replacement. So if you were to go on the Google machine or go on O'Reilly's website or AutoZone's website or Napa's website, uh, any of those parts store slash distribution companies for automotive parts, if you were to uh, look up your vehicle and then see if there is a listing for the cabin filter, then chances are you have one. Because if they're selling filters for your vehicle, then that means uh, you most likely have a vehicle equipped with a cabin filter. That's the easiest way to find out. It's better than trying to tear your dash apart or tear your wiper cowl apart and look for it physically. Just look up the listing first and then you will know. That also applies to shops that do not know. Speaking of shops, did you ever go to the shop for an oil change and the guys came out and they're holding your filters in front of you showing you all the dirt inside like they'll pull the engine filter out and they'll pull the cabin filter out and they'll be like hey these are dirty do you want to buy them and then you go sure those look like crap let's go ahead and buy one and then you get your bill and realize they charged you labor to change that filter and on the surface it looks okay but in the back of your mind you're going but wait a minute you already took it out so if i would have told you no you would have had to have put it back in and then that's the service so why do you feel it's okay to charge me the customer labor when you took the risk without permission to go in there and look and that's uh it's a double-edged sword because one could argue that yeah i took the risk and there is a labor charge but we risked losing that labor charge but from the customer's point of view it's kind of not fair because they already took the thing out and therefore they've already committed to completing the action as it is. So why should, uh, why should you have to pay for the labor when that other guy over there took the risk? Uh, let me know what you think about that concept down in the comment section down below. Uh, while you're down there, I don't usually do this, but while you're down there, uh, go ahead and uh, engage that like button. And if this is your first time here, considering that subscribe button, that way you will not miss out on any future content such as this. Okay, now that I've completed all the uh, mandatory promotional uh, aspects of creating a YouTube video, let's power up the lightsaber light bar. And uh, we're going to dig into uh, this uh, passenger compartment storage area here. And uh, we're going to get that filter dug out. Now, one thing you got to notice about a lot of these uh, glove box doors is they have what's called a door check installed on them. And that's basically just a device that prevents this from flopping down super hard when you release the, uh, the handle on it. Now, on this uh, particular one, the door check is going to be this little pin right here, which is attached to a little cable right over here. It's a little dark in there. Let's try to shed a little bit of light on the subject if I can manage it. There we go. A little bit going on. So, uh, in order to release this door, what we need to do is grab the, the door check right here, open the door some, we're gonna pull this down slightly and pop the, the little button out of the hole there. See how that works? It's like slotted like a, like a keyway shape. 
Now this thing is sort of spring-loaded. The, uh, the string wants to retract into the device up there, and that's okay, we can let it ride. What we'll do is we'll pull that little tab out. There's another tab on this side. We just kind of flex this in a little bit. And you can see it's a pain in the behind because this one went back into its home position. So we flex it again. And then we can pull the door downward. Now, this is just kind of dangling off these hinges here. So you have to be aware that if you push this down, you'll break your hinges off. And that's uh, not a good day. Now, we've got a panel back here on this uh, Tahoe. Behind that panel, or securing this panel, there's some torque screws. I think there's five or six of them. Let's go ahead and pull these guys out, and that'll give us some decent access to uh, the filter containment area behind there. Okay, coming in with a Torx bit 15 on the uh, little micro impact. Pull these little fasteners out here. I may be incorrect in my assumptions on this, guys. I've seen some witness marks uh, on some of these fasteners here, so it, there's a there's a good possibility that in fact uh, this filter may have been changed once upon a time. So I hope I'm not wrong because I'd like to see uh, pure nastiness and carnage out of this filter, but you never know. Maybe it was a part for something else once upon a time and they never put a filter in it. Maybe it has no filter in it. I know they come equipped, but it may have been omitted. Or maybe the guys at the, uh, the quick lube place showed the customer the filter and they said no and then they never put it back that also is possible we're missing a screw what was it uh president hoover said trust or roosevelt might have been roosevelt said trust and verify something like that one of those presidential figures there we go there's another one i think that's uh all of them on the panel here. Yep, let's pull this guy out. Now way back in here, we're gonna find another access panel and that will contain our filter. And I believe it's right here. So we've got a, there's a tab, pull that one. And the other tab, that's way back there. Pop that one out, pull this up. And right here, is our air filter element. Let's see what we get. Ooh. Ooh, that's not the greatest. All right, so here's our filter. Uh, we can see it is full of a bunch of uh, like plant organic matter, leaves and uh, uh, it's like tree stuff. I don't even know. It's like tree sperm and the pleats in this thing are loaded full of a bunch of dirt and whatnot. Uh, tell you what, let me cut the edges of this off and we can spread these pleats out and see just exactly how much filth has been captured uh, just from the air out of this little filter element. Now, I do not believe that this is the original. It says made in China. It is a Chinese filter and the GM ones are a um it's like a charcoal filled canister or a charcoal filled uh, filter and they do not say china on them so that's uh that's definitely been replaced at some point but it has been there for a while so let me find my skizzers and we're going to cut those sides open and uh see how much nasty is really inside of these plates on this filter so real quick question how many people's vernacular here has been forever changed to say the words china in such a fashion like you know we used to just say china but now we go china i think it's really catchy to say it that way i find it quite humorous and comical these are trim scissors like for uh for carpet and whatnot we're having a hard time getting through this uh china filter right here i'm gonna get in so much trouble for saying that like that people are gonna be like oh i hate that guy you can't say that racist Awkward silence. Oops. Cancelled. Ah. Bet you guys didn't think you'd be watching a guy chopping up an air filter today with some uh, some carpet scissors, did you? But that's what we're doing. Come on. 
Come on, almost there. We're getting through it. Look at that. We're like 96.2% there. All right. So now we can spread this thing out a little bit. It's like a reverse accordion. And this is the nasty contained within. That's uh, that's a lot of junk inside of this filter. Every one of the pleats seems to be full of uh, of some dirt and debris. I don't know what it is. I don't see a lot of animal hair or anything like that. But so this is organically gross and a little bit of organic matter to go with it. Yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the inner workings of our cabin filter here. I've uh, already ordered a replacement. Not a, uh, a cheapo one from China. This one's made in the USA, which is kind of cool. Thank you, MicroGuard, for uh, domestically producing a product. I appreciate that. Now, the question is, is the box made in the USA and you're using that as marketing, or is the filter element itself made in the USA? Because I would be very upset to find out that you were tricking us with, uh, with our own logo right there. That would not be cool. Now, aside from the obvious differences, this filter is 10 times the filter uh, that this one is. We can see that this unit is just some layered paper that acts as the filter element. This one is a multi-layered construction. Uh, it has like some, uh, like a carbon layer inside of it, like charcoal. And of course it has the paper. And then I believe there's also like a fiber layer to it as well. And you can kind of tell that just sort of based on the difference, the color difference on the, uh, the clean side versus the dirty side right here. See, we've got a uh, airflow indicator. So air is designed to flow in this direction. Therefore, this is the, uh, the first point of contact for the debris. And then of course we have the nice clean side, which is our breathable air side on the passenger compartment side. Taking a look at the box. This is not a sponsored video. That's just the one that I bought because they had the charcoal built inside of it. But it's a HEPA certified 99.97% .97 of particles over 0.3 uh, 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 microns. Is that the micron symbol? Yeah, 0.3 microns. It's high efficiency, good for creating nice breathable air. And according to the box, again, it's made in America. Beautiful. Yep, gets rid of dust, pollen, allergens, bacteria, odors, etc. All the stuff that my interior suffers from. And they made it with five layer technology. Pre-filtering, large debris, cool. Carbon filtering, pollutants, cool. Second stage, more pre-filtering of particulates. Uh, electrostatic filter material captures 99% of particles. What is electrostatic filter material? Is that like negatively charged filter elements that uh, cling to the ions on the dirt in the air? Is that what that is? And then there's a second electrostatically charged layer. That's a lot of fancy words for a filter. I don't know what electrostatically charged is, but whatever. Let us head over to the vehicle again. We'll get this thing slid into position. One thing though, I'm uh, not of the opinion that just this uh, simple filter change will solve the, uh, the stinky air problem that I encountered. And the reason I think it is a problem is because I did smell it and I don't smell very well, which tells me that that smell is probably quite profound. Uh, that being said, I'm going to take one final step to reduce some stink in this vehicle. I feel that I'm like the stinky kid that doesn't know about it, you know? I mean, I wear deodorant, but the car is going to need some. Anyway, I've got to slide these little tabs in. I have this backwards. These little tabs slide into some slots at the bottom of this EVAP case. And then again, it will just uh, rotate upwards and click into position there and there. It's not in. We're misaligned. There, now it's in. And while we're here, this right here, that's our door check mechanism. It's spring loaded inside, and there's a little plunger in there that the spring acts against. And when you pull it out, it compresses the spring. Then the spring naturally wants to push it back into its uh, normal position there. So we must not forget that, otherwise, the door. Will slam open and it will break the door so let's put our uh put our panel back on we have to slide this door check piece through the access hole in this panel it's a little tricky because the thing wants to retract on you 
Come here, you. Just gonna push that through. That's good. Oh no, it fell through. Gah! I had it and then I lost it. Story of my life. Come here. It's embarrassing. I can't put the thing through the hole. Right there. Okay, that's in position. Let's toss the, uh, the fasteners back in real quick. We'll get these guys tightened down, then we'll put the uh, put the box back on. Now the uh, the extra step for stink mitigation uh, that I was uh, discussing is a product called Friggy Freeze, and it's a uh, basically a foamy cleaner that we will spray into the evap box and it's designed to break down dirt and uh, other things of, or other types of nonsense that's built up on the actual evaporator core. And it's also designed to neutralize the smell. And it even comes with a little bottle of air freshener for your interior. So if you've got a stinky car, uh, it can be fixed. It can also be fixed with an ozone machine, but I don't have an ozone machine, so we're gonna have to, gonna have to skip that part. My leg caught it, you see that? Good stuff. So that screws in there. That one goes in right over here. Let's tighten them down. Trigger control. These are plastic. And the bolts aren't plastic, but they may thread into plastic. We don't want to strip them. That's the bottom line. That's what I'm saying here. Try getting it out. Try getting your words out, Ray. Just try it. gun does not fit in that corner. Seriously. Okay, that one's tight. Those are tight. This one up here needs to be tighter. My gun started slipping in the end there due to the angle. Okay, so now all I need to do is grab our door check piece. We're gonna point that in the right direction because it's oriented with the, uh, the shape of these little cutouts here, or protrusions rather. We stick that little peg through the hole. Right there, that's locked in. And we can just uh, close the door, that locks in, cabin filter, replacement complete okay so we're down below the dash here and I'm pulling this little access panel out because I'm going to uh, get ready to spray all that spray there's another bolt up there Hang on. and I got them out I thought I had them all and we were gonna skip past some meticulous bolt removal but looks like I missed one hang on bear with me folks okay skipped ahead we got that one uh, unbolted I believe don't tell me there's another one in there yeah, there is, but I think I got enough access to do what I need to do. Uh, what I'm up to here is I'm going to pull this uh, blower motor assembly out right here. That's our, our blower. Looks like it's got some Torx 20 fasteners that hold it in. This is going to become disconnected. And if we look upwards, we can see the, the bridge right here that runs over into the evaporator box. I'm gonna take that hole out, or take that out and create a hole, and then stick the can up there and spray all the nice cleaner spray into that evaporator through this hole right here. And that'll allow, uh, allow the cleaning agent to take place. And hopefully we can de-stink the, uh, 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 the AC system, the climate control system uh, in this Tahoe right here. So, need to go in there with the, that Torx 20. We'll take these bolts out and get ready to make it not smell bad. Okay, so I see one far away fastener. We're gonna get the hardest ones first. This is close quarters combat in here. Dropped it, but it's okay, I'll get it. There's another one right off right here to the right. Didn't drop that one. Ooh. Then the other one right here in front of us, and I think that's all. Yep. So now, if I've got the space with this cover here, we can 
trying to slide this blower motor out. That's all we had to do. And now I should have some access through this box into the uh, evaporator area. Uh, tell you what I want to do. I'm going to bust out a boroscope real quick and we're going to try to look into there so we can visually see just how dirty uh, that uh, AC evaporator core uh, really is. Now listen, I'm not claiming that my can of smell good stuff is going to remove the dirt and contaminants, whatever we're going to find inside of here. But what I am claiming is that it won't smell bad. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Found it. I am claiming that it won't smell bad because it is going to... Uh... Oh, let's turn that some. It's going to neutralize the pathogens or whatever you want to call it. The stuff inside that stinks. This is not horrible. That's the top side. I'm, I want to get a view of the bottom down below here. Maybe that's it. Usually these get nasty and clogged up at the bottom of the core. I don't see any restrictions in it. This is good. Yeah, there's a bunch of dirt and stuff in there. I see somewhere here in the middle. There's, there's some over there, some off to the right. Yep, I see some buildup in between the fins right here. I know the angle is not the greatest, but I just have a camera on a stick, so we gotta live with it. Okay, so what I shall do, back it up some. We've got two cans of a uh, product here. We've got the can of stuff that goes on the evaporator. And then there's also a can of air freshener stuff that we're going to spray inside on all the carpet surfaces. So the way I'll do this is I'm going to unload this can into that evaporator core. It's going to foam up everywhere. It's going to cover that core with the foam. And then we're going to start this thing up, turn on the blower fan after I reinstall it. We're going to run it on low and it's going to recirculate through the entire cabin. So the smell good properties of this can are going to be circulated throughout the entire AC system, through all the vents. Uh, through the doors, things of that nature. Uh, no, it will not damage anything. It's not, uh, it's not battery acid. It's just, you know, air freshener that foams. And while that's doing that, I'm also going to spray the air freshener stuff on all the carpet surfaces again. And it's going to help to saturate the cabin of this vehicle with some uh, neutralizing, smelling good uh, components and chemicals and whatnot. That way it doesn't stink in here. Okay, I've got you guys set up watching the, uh, the scope again. The camera, that's some foam that I just sprayed in. The camera is focused on the evaporator. I'm gonna come in and throw a bunch of spray in there and you guys you guys watch it come out and foam up everywhere. Sound good? Sound like a plan? I think so. Let's get that in there nice and deep black. Are we foaming? I think we're foaming. You guys see it yet? I can't see what you see. Oh yeah, yeah, we're foamed up really nice like. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna keep on spraying. I'm gonna run through this entire can of uh, spray inside of this evaporator. And again, none of that's gonna get sucked up into the fan because the fan is uh, upstream of all the spray right here. And we're starting to Oh, get a little heavy on that. I think we're done. Yep, can's empty. Okay, let's get the blower motor back in position here. I disconnected the electronical connection uh, while that thing was... Uh... Oh, silly me, I forgot to pull my scope out. There we go. Yeah, I disconnected... Gravity. Disconnected the electrical connector for this to make the reinstallation slightly easier. Time is of the essence. I need to get this fan running so we can blow that stuff through the core, not let it expand back out towards us. Okay, got one of them in. As soon as we get a second one in, I'm gonna turn the key on and get that fan going. I don't want that stuff to soak into the motor. Temporarily it's fine, but I think long term it, it could be a problem. That was tight. And then we got one more in the back. 
And uh, please forgive my horrible lighting situation. This is a, not a filming studio. We are real life making a auto repair and I'm squeezing under a dash with a bunch of foam cleaner smelly stuff called Friggy Freeze dripping all over me. I'm saturated in the automotive perfume. Last bolt. Okay, blower is re-secured. Let's get the connector connected. That's all plugged in. And then this guy plugs in through there to secure it. Good. Okay. For now, climb back out. Let's go around the driver's side, hit the key, and turn the blower and the AC on. Climbing in, key on. And AC all the way down. Starting the engine. Recirculate. We want to run recirc. And then the fan on low. Okay, I've got fan speed coming up. I hear the blower running back on low. So what we do now is windows up. And let's get our illuminator bar out of here. Lightsaber bar. Powering down. All right, BG Friggy Fresh time. It's a little can. Uh, they call this, it says it kills bacteria and freshens air conditioner systems. It's got some active ingredients, ammonium chloride, some other stuff. I don't know what all that means, but it smells good. So what I will do is, I don't like to spray this on the leather because it can't absorb. So we will just pull back some carpet area and get it in the carpet. So I preferably like this area right here, give it a decent spray. Just let that soak into the actual vehicle's carpet. Now I'm gonna close the door. We wanna contain all of this inside of the vehicle. We don't wanna let it kind of ventilate its, its, uh, its way out. Uh, over here on the driver's side, we'll spray it some more under the seat. The headliner is also a good place to spray it because it's a low contact surface and that's often found to be made out of cloth and that's what we want we want to saturate the cloth with it there we go let's turn on some rear ac here rear climate control fan speed i don't even know how to use the fan speed in the rear there it is i never touch it back there we can crank up the front a little bit the idea is, is all the stuff floating around up here in the atmosphere we want that to get sucked up through the recirculation feature in the vehicle and it can flow everywhere inside and absorb into all of the porous and carpeted surfaces. That's not real. Or is it? Like, Ray, do you have a machine gun just sitting in your back seat? Why would you do that? There we go, nice and smelly shiny. A little bit up here in the back. Uh-oh, running out, Dave, another! All right, folks, that is going to conclude the Smell Good Friggy Fresh slash HEPA AC system cabin filter replacement job on, uh, on a 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe. Uh, let me know what you think about this procedure and its validity uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, let me know what your opinion is on cabin air filters. Are they necessary? Are they silly? Should they not exist? Is it just extra stuff for the industry to put inside of vehicles that really doesn't need to be there? Or do you think that they serve a legitimate function? Uh, let me know again in the comment section down below. Uh, one more time, do not forget to engage that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, you guys have yourself a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video. End of stinky Chevrolet Tahoe. End of transmission. And let's see if the smoke has subsided. And the survey says, smells really nice in here. It's not a new car smell, it's more like new leather luggage smell. But either way, it doesn't stink. That's a win for me, I'll take that. See you guys later.